Hi welcome welcome to yet another episode under the bi monthly webinar series of get more from malapram and just like any other series the reason why we are actually doing this particular webinar episode is is actually only to provide clarity such that you will have confidence on what were the policies which have already purchased or which are planning to purchase the uh, see it is not just purchasing the policies but you should also understand how the policies are going to cover up your risk and in the event of a claim you should be able to uh, go and get the claim very smoothly okay so that's the purpose of actually doing this particular bi monthly webinar series get more from malapram and uh, just like another any other episode even before we start the topic of the day we go ahead with the declarations and the declarations are as follows we do not represent any insurance company okay so neither we are going to discuss a, a specific particular product or a particular insurance company or neither we are going to promote any particular insurance company under our bi monthly webinar series that is get more from malapram okay and at the same time the topics which we are going to discuss under this webinar episode is only related to insurance so no politics no movies and nothing okay it's all about insurance and insurance education right and at the same time we we don't intend to criticize any particular product or a particular person or any particular organization any particular insurance organization we don't intend to do that but if at all it just happens it is only by chance but we really don't intend to do that okay and at the same time the opinions which are going to be discussed here are going to be personal and it cannot be taken as an evidence under any court of law so with these declarations in position let us now get into today's topic of the day the topic of the day is what are those 10 things that you should focus what are those 10 things that you should focus in purchasing your office all risk insurance policy okay so this is the topic of the day and uh, the complete agenda is going to be like this okay first we'll be discussing about uh, the the situation analysis right we'll be doing the situation analysis then we'll be doing the discussion about the clarity for confidence so this is this is a section wherein we'll be doing an at length uh, discussion on the entire topic and wherein we try to provide clarity such that you will have confidence of what are the policies that you have already purchased or which are plan to purchase okay so uh, we'll do that complete discussion that's in the second uh, thing and then the third thing is about uh, the session wherein it's all about to think and thank so we will give you a lot of food for thought a lot of food for thought where it will help you to analyze the real life conditions such that tomorrow if there is any claim you should be in a position to handle it by yourself okay and uh, at the same time we'll also discuss not just knowing about the subject but what are the action points that you have to do when you actually complete this particular webinar episode okay so by the end of this episode you'll be very clear on what are the sections under which you have to have a coverage under the uh, office all this policy and this is for the especially for the small and medium entrepreneurs uh, wherein the, the size of the organization might not be that good, that large you know to to have a specific uh, person taking care of your insurance policies who is employed within your organization so you need to you need to have covered all the risk in place but at the same time at the same time if you, if you actually look into the, the situation analysis okay see um, as a business owner if you, if you actually look at the business owner will be will be always get how to grow the business right and how to handle the competition and how to strategically take the market capitalization and then get into the market and grow the business so this is what this what generally all the business owners will be looking at it doesn't it right okay but at the same time the moment we have the different departments coming in and different people coming in who is who is actually now working together as a team as a team everyone is focused 
only on the growth of, uh, of the organization such that the clients can be taken care properly at the same time the organization can be taken care and of course all the employees including the promoters they can also get the best benefit out of the uh, growth which is which is going to happen so everyone will be focusing on that but just in case just in case in this run of actually going through the entire business growth if say suppose if say suppose yeah see everything looks everything looks really exciting everything looks really pretty until 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 there is a claim which happens okay that's when we understand that's when we understand what is the policy that we have taken how much of coverage we have really is that is going to cover the the event which has just happened or probably the event uh, if if at all like uh, the the repercussions of the events like uh, in what conditions only the claims are paid and in what conditions the claims are not payable okay all these things comes into the picture only when there is a claim okay and when the claim happens when the claim happens you know we we, we generally think about this office insurance policy for the, the entire organization only in three different situations okay first thing if if the if you are actually you know owning a business which is on a rented premises and the owner is actually asking you and insisting you to take the policy okay that's when we we we, we actually think about uh, this particular policy right and at the same time when the when we go out for the loan when the banker insists the banker insists to have your policy in place okay because to lend your uh, loan he want to have the securities in place right if this has to happen then or if there is if if you have actually witnessed an unforeseen circumstances an unfortunate event within your environment probably with your neighbor or with your friends or with someone else when you are seen how the tragedy can happen on a speck of a fire and the event uh, okay and that fee, the fire can just just uh, take away the entire business in one single go we have seen we have seen n number of cases like that n number of cases okay and in those situation what happens okay like the, the entire fire is out there the entire fire is out there and and as a business owner we, are, we just can't do anything if it doesn't have those the the safety uh, precautionary measures in place right we we have seen we have seen the situations where we could do nothing the entire entire stock in the godown and the entire machinery got burnt out got just burnt out and the flames have actually gone even to the next uh, um uh, neighbor uh, uh, company and it it also caught fire there right? there's, there's a lot of damages which do happen see uh, if 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 you actually see like a um, uh, real accident which happens like you, you can actually see it out here there's so many accident which happened which just wiped off the entire company the assets got wiped up the the, the stock got wiped up the finished goods what got wiped up and and at the same time even even there might be even some lives which can which which also can get uh, um uh, they they can they can just you know revamped off uh, because of uh, these fire accidents okay so all these conditions all these conditions if at all is there this is one side of the story okay there could be also some more events like uh, you have your very important assets which are out there and all those assets like you now there could be a burglary which would have happened okay this is kind of burglary which would have happened where there is in a very clear evidence that there is a forcible entry into your premises and somebody has stolen the assets of the company okay or it could be even a theft it could be even a theft why it's it's not just your assets which are uh, which might be theft but it could be even even your machinery would have actually got um uh, breakdown because it could be like an electrical or or an mechanical uh, break, breakdown okay an electrical or mechanical breakdown can also make your complete production to come to a stand still stand still okay and at the same time whatever the money that you would have stored in your organization okay even that money can be stolen even that money can be stolen okay and while while not not just uh, when it is in the safe but also when you are actually transferring your money 
your money your money from one place uh, uh, to the next uh, uh, place right okay like the cash in transit the cash in transit while while doing so also the the burglary can happen the theft can happen even the rights happening and your your cash is going in between that mob <coughs> even in those situations there might be incidents which can happen which can dent into the funds of the company okay so this is a situation wherein they, they we, we really feel we really feel like we need to have a proper coverages in place okay and like in your premises in your premises like you can see here in your premises there is a new uh, um, visitor who have actually come in or your most important client has come in to check the way how you do the produce production right the quality standards in your organization and suddenly he fell in your shop floor or that, that he, there is there is some work which is going on in your office probably some extension work or it could be probably a painting work which you are actually doing it right and those workers got met with an accident in your premises so definitely where do they go they will come back to the owner of the organization the business owner of the organization and then they will ask for the compensation okay even though you are not the person who actually made that accident to happen wantedly okay even if it is unwanted unprecedented accidents even if that happens the complete liability comes on to the business owner because it has actually happened on your premises okay so this is this is how uh, uh, the incidents can happen within the organization but but tell me one thing tell me one thing if if there are so many incidents so many incidents which are actually happening out there okay um do you think do you think that uh, we need to take we need to take the separate separate policies insurance policies for the entire events like uh, a policy for uh, a fire uh, protection a policy for burglary a policy for your liabilities the the public liability which can come up or do, do you think like we need to take we need to take a separate separate policies and that too for a small organization wherein there is not many st- uh, people are there not many resources are there to take care of all your policies their wordings and their renewals in place do you think is it going to be a feasible condition can you just can you just type in type in in the in the uh, chat box do you think is it feasible yes or no oh yes 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 it's correct the answer is no okay the answer is no how can how can a small and medium entrepreneur or a micro entrepreneur can take care of so many policies at one single go or need to look through so many policies it's not possible right okay the the best way the best way of doing all these things all these things all these coverages in one single place is only by having that we need to take an all risk policy yes it is an all risk policy wherein all these risks can be covered in one single insurance plan and this is the best the best especially for the small micro and medium entrepreneur kind of companies a large organization because it need lot many add ons to be taken care or it could be a very specified customized thing to be taken care there you we will have even the resources in place so we can have a separate separate policies but for a small and medium entrepreneur or a micro entrepreneur it's really difficult to have so many policies in place and having the complete coverage in place see there might be your banker might be actually asking you to take a policy because he's he's willing to cover he's he's actually worried about covering the stocks for which he has lended a working capital okay or probably when you're constructing a new uh, or extending your plan right he would have given an capital loan so he's interested only in that asset but what about the public liability but what about the employees liability right okay and what about what about even the uh, burglary or the theft right so all these coverages if you want to have a peace of mind and especially for the small and medium entrepreneurs and the micro entrepreneur companies right okay this is the best plan you need to go for an office all risk policy okay it's it's a kind of a business all risk policy 
it's not just only for the administrative kind of thing it can be also taken for the entire organization even in a manufacturing setup we can still have it okay right let us see let us see um, in, in our next session that is on clarity for confidence so this is the session wherein we'll be we'll be exactly doing the at length discussion on the entire coverages which are going to be there the top 10 things that you need to focus while you are actually purchasing the office all risk policy see the reason why we are actually doing this in an office all this policy there's so many coverages which has been inbuilt such that it is a comprehensive plan and you know what happens uh, uh, most of the people most of the people i'm not saying uh, everyone but most of the people who are there in the market to just to give a, a very least premium quote they tend to they tend to not to give the sections of coverages okay few coverages they just delete and probably few few insurance companies they say uh, a five basic policies a must and then probably a minimum of another four sections which you have to take but there is a, overall there's a better way of having a discounted uh, uh, premiums on the all this policy so what they do they just choose some very small segmented coverages uh, and additional four coverages and then they give the policy but that, that really doesn't give you the exact amount of coverage the exact covering of different kinds of risks which which are there inbuilt into the business Okay, so let us discuss, let us discuss one after another, the 10 things that you need to focus on your office all this policy, right? Are you ready? If you're ready, just type in yes in the chat box. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you, thanks a lot. So uh, we, we are actually uh, getting into this section of providing the clarity for confidence, okay? So the first thing, the first thing which we need to look at is the fire insurance coverage okay let, let me just give a little brief okay uh, we have also done another episode earlier on what are the 10 major pitfalls while you are actually uh, going to do uh, going to design a fire uh, insurance policy okay which we have already discussed it uh, earlier uh, but uh, let, let me also uh, uh, give you the at length uh, uh, not at length the discussion but uh, probably the uh, the main points of what are the major uh, um, coverages which are going to be there in the uh, um, office all this coverage okay so it's it's the fire insurance uh, coverage that we will be looking at okay and the fire insurance coverage we will be having the covers uh, which will be covering it against all the fire accidents okay number one at the same time even the lightning can be covered fire accidents the lightning and at the same time the stfi so this is this, this is the short way of actually you no know, giving this uh, um, abbreviation it is a storm tempest flood and inundation so it is stfi storm tempest flood and inundation i, I think there was also in a movie which has come in on act of god on insurance right okay so the if it is an act of god you need to go to the god and ask for uh, uh, the claim that that was the whole story on it okay so it is the same act of god which will be given a coverage within the policy okay and uh, wherein we can also have the uh, uh, strike uh, um, uh, rights and civil commotion uh, even that SRCC cover can also be given under this particular policy that means if there is a if there is a strike which is happening and uh, the the people who are doing the strike they got aggravated and uh, they just got into the uh, your premises and uh, broken all the assets or they didn't some uh, or they have stolen some assets uh, from the uh, premises right a burglary which has happened so all those things even say suppose there is a rights which are happening in the in the society okay because of some or other reason which when your 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 company is nowhere your business is nowhere related to that okay but because the mob is going on and they just they just you know taking the stones and uh, put it into the every other uh, business uh, um, company right okay and probably it, it it actually damaged your assets uh, sometimes it could be your major asset okay right or uh, they, they would have even set the fire uh, to the companies out of their angry 
right all these things can happen within the uh, environment in, in which we are there okay right and these are all unexpected and never ever we even think in the in, in the in the, in the strangest of the dreams that like you know, this is going to happen right so those things if does happen so we need to have those coverages in place so it is stfi it is srcc which we need to have a coverage in place okay then at the same time we also have the coverage for the ethpit of course we need to pay some additional premium there is a zone wise premium which is out there zone one zone two so uh, in, in in few zones uh, it is more at the pick prone zone in some zones there is no at pick so accordingly the premium rates do differ okay and uh, so so those coverages also can be given under this policy in the terrorism can be uh, covered because of a terrorist attack if say there is any damage which is happening to your assets those things can also be covered right so this these are the basic coverages which will be coming under the fire insurance policy but the thing is we need to look into the important things okay and the important things that we really need to focus on the first thing is about the exclusions so what are the things or what are the events or what are the conditions under which the policy will never give you the coverage so what are the exclusions which are there okay say suppose say suppose uh, you 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 are a chemical uh, company a pharmaceutical company okay and uh, probably you are actually dealing with the chemicals which are less than 32 degrees flash point uh, and it is stored in your uh, um, godons okay and but when you are taking the policy when you are taking the policy you have actually booked the policy or without your knowledge probably the person who just help you to book the policy it could be a banker or it could be an intermediary who is out there okay without a clear understanding of your business without a clear understanding of the risk in which you have been focused into right he would have actually given your policy but that is not exactly covering your less than 32 degrees flash point chemicals if that is the scenario i'm just giving an example okay and then you have when you when you look through those exclusions in the exclusion it will be written if you uh, uh, if there is any uh, event happening because of the less than 32 degrees flash point then it is not covered okay probably the premium is little less because it is more than 32 degrees flash point the chemicals are there in the godown okay but if the event happens that event is excluded if there is an uh, explosion or an uh, uh, an implosion which happens and because of which the fire gets into the uh, uh, factory right and the proximate cause is less than 32 degrees flash point chemical right and you have not taken the coverage under that then it is excluded from the policy okay and uh, even there are some uh, some warranties which they will put up the warranties are like uh, we have uh, we, we are assuming that you have all the fire safety measures in place all the fire extinguishers in place or the hydrant system is 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 been installed and it is been completely up and running and there is a proper maintenance of this fire hydrant system okay and there are some smoke detectors which are there and uh, and so all this all these warranties which which will be mentioned under the policy we need to be very careful whether we are going to abide with those warranties if not it is better to pay some additional premium and get all those warranties removed from the policy it's always worth it okay probably you might be paying some little extra premium but it's worth it it's worth it in doing that particular uh, uh, coverages in place okay so uh, so those warranties we need to look at and if it all required we need to even correct those warranties we need to correct those warranties okay so the the first thing which you need to focus is on the exclusions the things which are not covered okay and at the same time the warranties which may, which says that only under these conditions only under these conditions only the claims are payable so only if you are maintaining the hydrant system only if you are maintaining smoke detecting system or uh, um, only if you have your fire extinguishers and which are in complete annual maintenance and they are they are completely working or sometimes the burglary is been given only if you have the cc cameras or 
राउंड द क्लॉक द सिक्योरिटी सिस्टम इन प्लेस वॉच राउंड द क्लॉक वॉच ओके सब if if these things we are not able to do it so better we actually correct it at the quotation level itself we correct it at the quotation level and then and then we actually take uh, the policy probably we may have to pay some little extra premium but it is always always worth it okay and at the same time we also have something called as deductions deductions means to that extent the 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 claim will not be payable See, suppose generally what we have seen into the five section, it is ten percent of the claim, or with a minimum of ten thousand rupees, something like that. Okay, so uh, if there is a claim of say one lakh rupee, or fifty thousand rupees as a claim, so ten percent of the claim is how much? Five thousand rupees. But minimum excess, minimum a deduction, what I have said, it is ten thousand rupees. So even if it is a fifty thousand rupees claim, which is payable. The insurance company will pay you only forty thousand rupees, because the first ten thousand rupees has been deducted, and why is it so? Because of the insurable interest. That's the concept of insurable interest. We have actually dealt with this uh, concept in the in our earlier episodes. Um, uh, in life insurance, the the concept of insurable interest comes while you are taking the policy. But in general insurance, in all these uh, uh, asset policies kind of thing, in the complete general insurance, the the, uh, uh, the insurable interest comes while there is a claim that will be tested when there is a claim. Okay, so that's the reason this deduction comes to the picture. Okay, I hope this is this is very clear for you, right? Okay, done. So the deductions will be there. So we need to focus on exclusions, warranties, and deductions. Right? These are three things. And then we have to even see the occupation. What what is what is the exact business occupation which we have mentioned on the policy? See, uh, thanks to uh, the regulator and even the IAB, uh, the Insurance uh, um, Institute um, uh, uh, Bureau of India, right? So these people have already defined the classification of different different uh, businesses, different occupations. They have already defined. Okay, so we have to choose the right uh, occupancy. If just to get a uh, lesser premium, if you are choosing a wrong occupancy, okay. Uh, say suppose uh, we. Uh, I'll give a uh, small example. See, uh, we have uh, the small uh, companies uh, who deal with uh, uh, a kind of a C and F agent. Okay, uh, so a very few, but ten, fifteen people will be there in the C in the C and F agency, and they have a go down out there, and they also have uh, even the uh, say electronic uh, related items uh, into the go down, or different different kinds of products they keep it. Now, if you if you look into the manufacturing uh, product kind of thing, uh, there is a very less risk, but when you have the electronics in place. you have little more risk because in the electronic goods there is an um, uh, the, the 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 panel which comes up and that panel is made up of plastic because plastic doesn't require a complete heat uh, it doesn't require a fire to melt it it even melts with the heat so if there is a fire accident which happens the plastic can also melt and change its shape if it shapes if the shape changes the the instrument the electronic equipment might not even work okay so that's the reason if we have the electronic equipments in the uh, storage uh, place then we have to take that risk as the primary risk okay so or along with this if we have the chemicals in place then we have to because chemicals might will be having little more risk when compared to the plastic so you will have a better uh, a higher rate of uh, premium on that if you have a uh, products which are made out of wood right or paper products then it is even more risky even more risky or uh, if you have the equipments or the chemicals which is less than 32 degrees flash point then then also your rating will go up uh, probably, probably the highest rating if you look at it is all your electronic goods and also even your glass items i get it's so fragile it's so fragile right okay so the highest out of the uh, out of the entire uh, uh, gamut of uh, um assets what we'll be having the uh, we need to pick up the highest risk oriented um asset and then we have to take that classification for the entire uh, unit for the entire business so your your primary business might not be so uh, um 
uh, vulnerable to the fire but probably the storage materials might be a little more uh, vulnerable right and if the storage is within your uh, production premises or within your office premises right then your production cost uh, you, you, your your raw material things which are more risky that classification will be applied for the entire organization there is also another case there is also another case if say suppose you have your production center at one place but your godowns are in a separate um, um uh, what do you call uh, uh, the premises which has been separated by a, a barricade or a wall right in those situations we can actually diversify the risk we can take a separate policy for your administrative kind of thing and a separate policy for your uh, uh, manufacturing and the storage staying together we can also do that okay so it it all depends on your existing structure of your business your production center your manufacturing unit and then we need to do this particular calculation okay if everything comes in a one single boundary the highest risk need to be considered in calculating the premium it is not the lowest i hope this is very clear if it's clear can you please type in yes in the chat box okay thank you thank you we, we love you people because the way how you people are consistently helping us out in actually doing this particular bi monthly webinar episode it's only you people because of whom we always get motivated to do the right thing for, for this society so that's that's the, so that we, we can we can actually give a lot of clarity so that you will have confidence in what are the policies which you are already purchased or which you are planning to purchase Okay. that's the purpose of actually doing this entire webinar series right so the selection of the occupation of the risk is something and then the description of the property okay uh, like like you say like i have an office i have a building and then i have another administrative building and the production uh, shed right okay now how is this defined is you, is that an as asbestos uh, uh, roof or how much how many floors is the building right do you also have a basement so basement coverage is also something which is required okay because there might be an exclusion within your policy which says no we don't cover the basement risk or they will also put up a warranty stating that there is no basement risk exposure for this okay then it's like you have you have just taken a null and void kind of policy so policy even doesn't exist or probably you are storing your entire material in the basement which is not warranted under the policy right okay and uh, uh, even even it would be like this um um uh, just to have the stfi that is storm tempest flood and inundation cover there might be a warranty stating that uh, the the base level of the your business unit is is 2 feet above the uh, the road level outside the building or outside your production uh, um warehouse right okay uh, and if say suppose you your uh, uh, you uh, the level of your uh, production is uh, the ground level of your production building is actually less than the road then your policy is null and void why because the the water can get into your uh, premises and can do the damage in a rainy season right there could be an inundation of water which can happen because of the low level okay so these conditions need to be taken care of. if we don't look through these conditions then if there is a claim if there is a claim see everything looks rosy until there is a claim once the claim happens that's when we'll understand oh my god so there are so many conditions which is out there so we have to go through all these conditions okay and then how much of sum should are you taking I I've, I've actually seen in a uh, few of the situations wherein uh, uh because the banker has given you a loan of only a working capital loan of only 2 crores okay and he's worried only about the stock and he says no I'll I'll get the insurance policy done you say okay fine get it done he is focused only on to the asset for which he is giving the money for which he is he is giving the funding so he'll, he'll only secure that right and whatever the rest of your organization he is not even bothered how can he just give a coverage only for stock but he is just left out your entire manufacturing setup that's not right right okay 
right so you need to you need to come out with the proper value of your asset you might have constructed your building uh, your your office uh, premises probably 10 years back 10 years back it is actually taken um, say around 5 crores of uh, um, uh, investment which you have done do you really go for 5 crores no no why because probably you would have spent a uh, 2 crores only in acquiring the land right so for land there is no insurance which is required it is only for the building right so you remove the 2 crores then it is it is say suppose it is 3 crores is the building value now you need to even take the plinth and foundation if it is if it is also taken into the basement so you need to count all those floors like below ground level how many are there above ground level how many are there you have to do all those things and then the different blocks which are there you have to have a coverage and you have to give the description of each block and what is it you do in every block there could be one block in which you might be saying uh, it's an administration block and in the other block you might say uh, this is a complete main uh, production which happens the third block in which you say probably this is my uh, godown or a storage of the finished goods and in the fourth with a small uh, block wherein it might be for the cafeteria of the for the employees of the organization okay so you need to clearly justify like how you have arrived at a total sum assured uh, according to the building according to the uh, demarcated buildings okay why because we need to have a clear cut valuation thing done see for for the entire buildings to be constructed you have you have uh, the example that we were discussing it might be 3 crores right now now if you have to construct the same buildings at the current cost do you think you can construct everything in say 3 lakhs 3 crores after 5 years no because the cost of your construction got increased your cement cost increased your your steel cost increased your labor cost has actually doubled and especially after the pandemic situations right if that is the condition if that is the condition how can you still have the same coverage of of say 3 crores for your entire organization probably you may have to go for say 7 crores now okay so otherwise otherwise what happens you you pay the premium only for 3 uh, crores insurance company also takes up the premium but if there is a claim because you have not covered the entire premises for the total replacement value replacement value say suppose it is 7 crores but you have done it only for 3 crores that means what insurance company does is you have not transferred the entire risk so it is under insured with us it is not completely insured so even if there is any damage they pay only under insured payment to the same extent that means say suppose there is a claim of 1 crore rupee because you have under insured for almost 60% so 60% of the payable claim amount that is 60 lakhs will not be paid it is only 40 lakhs which will be paid okay so coming coming to the adequacy of sum assured is something which is very very important and we we have also even uh, dealt it uh, very uh, in depth in our earlier episode on uh, the top things which you have to take care uh, in a fire insurance claim like in a fire insurance policy so that your claims processing will be uh, much smoother okay so adequacy of your sum assured the real replacement value is something which is really required okay so these are some things which you have to focus under the fire insurance cover and this is something a definite section which which every insurance company will be saying insisting to have it because unless you have this they can't add up the other risk within this office or risk policy okay so uh, the second thing what we need to look at is fire loss of profits okay if you look into the fire loss of profits so Why, why, why do we need? Why do we need this loss of profits? And how is it being um, calculated? Do you have any guesses? Don't get worried. I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. See, the real requirement is because say there is a fire accident which happened. Now to construct the entire organization, to come back to the uh, original state and reinstate the entire process of production, it might take three to four months. Let's consider three months. okay if it takes 3 months that means for 3 months there is no income to the organization okay 
because there is no production there is no profits for the organization but at the same time the employees are there you have to pay their salaries you have to take care of them right so there are some fixed expenses which keep going and at the same time your net profits which you are supposed to earn they also calculate what is the average net profits that you have made and uh, they calculate based on that and then they will they will see your projected figures right and that net profit and your fixed expenses becomes payable under the file loss of profits okay so this file loss of profits uh, um, is required even even probably you may have to even uh, go out and then rent out another premises to just temporarily start the business out there and after you do the complete reinstatement you, you just come back okay so even those costs need to be covered so all this can be covered only if you have a right kind of um, uh, uh, file loss of profit coverage when the fixed expenses and the net profit of the organization the projected net profit of the organization both becomes payable under this file loss of profit section of your office honors policy and we suggest we suggest every business owner to please have it to please take it oh yeah okay uh, this 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 one question over here okay okay it's it's very good question thank you thank you vishnu okay see the question here is uh, um, if say suppose there are no profits for the organization they're still running or they just started off the business right then what according to this formula your net profit becomes zero right but your fixed expenses are going to be there your turnover your fixed expenses are going to be there right okay so your fixed ex expenses becomes your summation your payable summation okay i hope i answered this question right okay thank you thank you so um, so the duration of this five loss of profits it comes in four different durations like for three months for six months for nine months and for one full year i suggest because there is there's hardly any premium difference between the quarterly and the yearly so uh, quarterly and the 12 months so i suggest to have a 12 months of coverage under this five loss of profit coverage okay and it is always given as an as a kind of a link to the base fire policy and the fire loss of profit it is already been included and definitely you need to have this coverage in place right okay so let's now go to the third one the third one is all about the missionary breakdown so the missionary breakdown if you look at uh, it could be an electrical or mechanical breakdown means what the missionary is working it's in a proper condition and it's been working till the time of uh, uh, breakdown okay it is not that like uh, you uh, um, you just switch it on and it is not coming up it's not like that okay so it is running and then it, it just got into the break okay breakdown okay so it, but if, if you if say suppose uh, 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 in what conditions it is actually not covered okay it is not covered only if there is if the the damage is uh, linked to the regular wear and tear a regular wear and tear nobody can take it right it's like now you have your vehicle you have your tires because you run your vehicle your tire is definitely going to have a wear and tear now you can't have a claim for that wear and tear but that's that's the usability and the utility of that particular asset right and then at the same time if there is no regular maintenance which has been done and uh, uh, then there is a uh, machinery breakdown or it could be also even over usage of the uh, machinery okay and if there is an over usage of the machinery and uh, because of which they are not maintaining the operational logbooks okay then also the claim under the machinery breakdown is not payable it we cannot pay that particular claim okay are you are you getting it right okay so the machinery need to be there there should be a proper usage as per the prescribed standards right and there should be a recorded proof like when was it used how many hours it has been used and what was the production capacity of that so everything everything need to be maintained as a logbook so who is if there are three four employees who actually come in different shifts to uh, work on the same uh, machinery then we need to have each of those people signatures on that right and that book need to be given when there is a claim all right 
uh, but if it is overused like it was supposed to use for only 8 hours a day and then after that you need to give at least 5 to 6 hours of uh, standby time for it to come back to the normal temperature and then work again okay but instead of giving any break if you are continuously working for 24 by 7 definitely there is going to be a breakdown and if it is an intentionally if it is highly high uh, usage of the machinery happening then the machinery breakdown policy will not cover that particular claim okay right so uh, then we have the fourth one which is the electronic equipments coverage okay this electronic equipments coverage uh, what happens uh, uh, the machinery breakdown coverage is there then um, then only this this even the breakdown will be covered under this particular policy Okay. But at the same time, we need to also check whether the portable equipments, portable equipments are going to be covered under this or not. Because uh, we have seen few uh, companies, though uh, uh, insurance companies, though they are they were actually offering the office orders policy, but they are mentioning a warranty stating that uh, this policy does not cover the um, what do you call the portable uh, electronic equipments. Okay, if, if there is any such warranties, please do check. But if at all you want to have a coverage for even your portable uh, electronic equipments like your laptops, your your um, your most valuable mobiles, something like that, then you need to have removed that those warranties from the policy and have the coverage is in place. Probably you may have to pay some little extra premium, but it is always, always, always worth it. Okay, right. And at the same time, we also have, uh, uh, we, we need to give the entire assets uh, list because see what happens uh, when we actually go for a missionary breakdown coverage and uh, you, you, uh, if it is not, if, if you are not covering the entire assets, entire manufacturing uh, setup of your organization, you can also even give a list of machinery for which you want to have a coverage. But if there is anything else which is happening to the other machinery which is not in the list then uh, the policy will not cover that but if it is because of an accident it happens because the fire policy covers the entire assets it can be given right i hope this is clear okay so this is the fourth thing which you have to take care of. and then the fifth thing is about the burglary burglary or uh, even burglary is different and theft is different okay so burglary is uh, there is a clear evidence of um, a forcible inlet which happened like you no know, a person has come in and there's a breakage of window or a breakage of a door or breaking of a wall and then the asset has been taken off that is burglary but it, there is no evidence on how the person has actually entered and then uh, the asset is nowhere it is not there then it is called as theft. So normally in a base uh, burglary policy, the theft is not covered. It is taken as an add-on. Probably you may have to pay a little more premium, but it is always worth to have that theft also included under your policy. And coming to the burglary thing, especially um, it, it is covered on a first loss basis. Why? Because see, even if there is a theft which happened, uh, uh, the theft or the burglary they don't take away the entire uh, um, equipment or the entire assets there might be some damage see if say suppose the entire assets is of uh, say around 10 crores of uh, value probably uh, you might think you know, not the big uh, machinery because nobody can actually take it off right okay so probably the small things like a small tools which is of more valuable okay those things can be covered okay so that's the reason um, we we all we normally go for a first loss basis that means only to that extent in one single event the coverage will be given not for the entire sum assured of the base policy okay but at the same time the sum assured if you actually look at the sum assured will be calculated just like your total assets now uh, uh, the sum assured should be always less than the total assets it can't be total assets minus uh, building the value of the building because nobody can take away your building right they will only damage your building but they will not lift your building they can't theft your building okay so the building value need to be removed from the total value and then that is a maximum which can be given for the burglary it could be less than that but it can't be more than that and those complete list of items along with the serial number everything along with the value of the sum assured everything need to be given to the insurance company well before taking the policy okay this is the fifth thing that you have to take care 
and then we have the sixth coverage which should be taken care and this is something which i say is is something which is really important and uh, this is the one which gives you a lot of coverage benefits okay let's see this public liability cover okay so any third party liability which is arising because of your product or your work at your premises at your premises okay so things could be like you know bodily injury or property injury person is coming to your office or there's a group of people who are coming to do a work at your office and there's a sudden fall of a machinery or something onto them and they, they died it's a liability onto the company right because that happened on your premises so the business owner will be will be made liable for that there's a huge amount of cash flow which probably may have to do for the settlement purpose for an amicable settlement purpose okay uh, we have we have seen one incident which actually happened uh, um uh, wherein uh, uh, the public in in the public liability coverage uh, wherein uh, the, uh, there, there is an uh, what do you call uh, the the a new machinery has come to the premises and uh, there's a lift which has come in uh, it's not lift it's, it's a crane which has come in okay and um, a crane and a forklift both were, have come to just lift the equipment and then put it onto the place where it has to be erected now while they are lifting it within a forklift and uh, uh, the crane the balance of the machinery was not there and it just fell onto a particular person and the person died and this person is just 21 years right and uh, it seems he's his own he's the son of the owner of that particular uh, um crane this is a huge ruckus which happened and i i could see through what what the tension which the business owner has undergone in actually settling the entire entire uh, uh claim which they were doing uh, this was way back i think 3 uh, 4 years back and um Uh, they were actually asking for fifteen lakh rupees as a compensation. Fifteen lakhs. How can a business just pull out the fifteen lakhs and give it to, give it to them? I had got settled. I think somewhere around eight lakh rupees is what was paid up front, and after that also some another two lakh rupees was also given again. So uh, it was it was total ten lakh rupees got. And see the kind of pressure which the uh, owner will have during that entire process. They have just put that uh, uh, dead body uh, on the side. So many people who have come in, uh, some politicians have come in, local leaders have come in. Uh, it was a huge ruckus, huge. Okay. So why do we need to have all those? All why do you have to you know go through those situations? If we have this public liability coverage in place, what do I need to be paid? Let let it be paid through the court of law, and what do I need to be paid up to the sum issue? It will be paid by the insurance policy. What are the award which comes from the uh, court? That will be paid. That will be paid by the insurance company. Okay, and it could be even the medical expenses. So they met with an accident. There's a medical treatment which need to happen, and all that because it happened on your premises, you have to take care. So as a business owner, you have to pay that entire money, right? So even those things can be reimbursed, and it could be even a personal or an advertisement injury which can happen. you put up a hoarding on your place or you have your new signs in place and uh, because of that somebody has got uh, uh, impacted okay so the liability can also turn up with that those things can also be covered under the personal uh, public liability policy okay so uh, we need to we need to look into how the uh, aggregate limits are actually uh, um taking care under this policy right so uh, there is in in all these liability policies if you look at uh, there is something called as aoa and aoy so aoa is any one accident aoy is any one year okay so in in any one year what is the maximum liability that can turn up and in any one accident what is the maximum liability which can be given and in the entire uh, uh, term uh, uh, the liability policies maximum it could be 1 is to 4 okay so it is 1 is to 1 then 1 is to 2 and then 1 is to 4 this is these are the three varieties generally people use while taking uh, the policy okay let me just explain you how it works and 1 is to 1 is always being the best and we always recommend to have that 1 is to 1 under the policy okay and uh, how uh, see so I'm, i'm just giving an example here we covered the similar example in our uh, cgl law 
policy webinar okay i'm just taking the same example over here so there if say suppose we have taken a public ag uh, liability aggregate limit of say 50 crore uh, cover okay and then there is a claim of 40 40 crores okay so if you have if you have uh, an one is to one coverage the entire 40 lakhs 40 crores becomes payable okay but if it is one is to two one is to two then maximum only that means the total sum assured will be divided into half that is only 25 crores okay and so uh, uh, so the maximum payable under any one accident is only 25 crores it could be also even one is to four one is to four wherein it is that means 50 crores divided by four it becomes 12.5 crores right okay so the maximum payable claim can be only 12.5 crores if it is one is to four because the the uh, claim payable becomes less the premium also will be less when when you have one is to four but it is always better to have one is to one as the best coverage in place okay and this is only for the illustration purpose we can we need to go through the nitty gritties like and uh, uh, we also even look into the deduction so all the things we have not considered here there's only uh, we want to show you how the impact of uh, uh, the ratios what you choose between any one accident and any one uh, year uh, how it is going to have an impact on the claim is what we want to show you here. Okay, so this is the sixth one which you need to take care of that's about the public liability. And uh, within the public liability, it is a bodily injury, it could be because of the sickness, it could be um, a disease which is sustained because of the person working in that particular organization, including the death resulting from that. Okay, right, and it could be even the medical expenses which need to be taken care because because of the premises that you own the event has actually happened or on which you are you are actually being a rent right and uh, next to premises on your own uh, uh, like uh, if something happens there and um, say, say, say suppose there's a fire accident which happened in your premises and the smoke has actually gone to the next uh, company or the next business right so because of which their stock got damaged because of the fire accident in your company so even this uh, coverage can be given under the public liability right okay are you, are you getting it right and because of your operation somebody can get uh, um, some kind of damage something happening like um, uh, yeah, there is a the furnace which you have actually constructed right and there's a smoke which is coming out of that that smoke has gone to the next building or the next uh, uh, factory and there the damage has actually happened probably it could be a clean and uh, green uh, clean room uh, manufacturing which is happening the dust particles got into their uh, uh, production center and uh, the quality uh, they have rejected the complete uh, batch so all the liability can come out to you even those things even those things can be taken care okay because of your operation somebody got a bodily injury because of which there is a medical expenses which need to be taken care those things can also be covered under your public liability policy okay right so public liability cover covers your personal injury also right it could be an offense arising out of your business activities right or it could be libel and slander right even those claims can also be covered under your public liability policy it could be even a false arrest or a wrongful detection so whatever it is but but your advertisement injury those things are not covered under public liability it is covered under your commercial general liability policy okay in a public liability policy it is purely on a third party liability arising whatever is happening within your premises right okay so with that we have finished the uh, public liability then let us now come to the seventh point which is the money in safe and transit okay so in in any business any any business what happens we tend to keep some money within the company within the premises of the company right we we keep we generally keep it in the safe right at the same time we might even take uh, the money from the safe to the uh, bank or from one from the bank to the safe uh, there could be the transaction which also be going out right so what we need to look at is what is a maximum amount of money which normally gets into the transit we call it as uh, per sending limit or it is also called a single carry limit 
okay one transaction one moment of the cash what is the maximum amount that is number one we should also give who are the designated people who actually cover this particular uh, who, who actually take care of this entire process we also look into that okay and then what is the annual limit so on an annual basis how much of total uh, transfers which do happen to that extent the policy the coverage need to be taken okay it is just like the marine policy right and at the same time the what is the maximum limit of money that you will store in your uh, um, your cash uh, in safe in your safe what is the maximum amount of cash that will be saving right so even these things if the numbers are there if, if we know those values only then we can have the money in safe and transit now even though there are a lot of uh, online transactions which has actually come up but still there is always a possibility of carrying the cash if those uh, is is applicable i such is you need to have this policy in place right okay and the security and the operational procedure everything need to be detailed out to the insurance company because they will say there is always a security guard when you are actually no moving the money a security guard with the arm should be there and it is always been moved in uh, the trunks and a seal and uh, lock and seal condition okay so all these warranties will be there you should be very clear whether you are going to abide by those warranties if yes go ahead if no pay the medical premium and get it removed it's always possible it's always possible right okay and um, then comes the fixed gas or the new and the new sign uh, board uh, uh, coverage okay the fixed glass coverage if you look at okay so it is it is a large glass structures like the we, we also call it as play glass when we need to have a coverage for the fixed glass or the play glass we need to give the complete dimensions of the entire glass okay and uh, the dimensions and the values of the glass and also uh, for the new sign also we need to give the entire value of how you arrived at it and all this should be on a replacement value basis only not your actual cost not your purchase cost but it is on replacement cost okay is this clear right okay so that's about the eighth point which you have to focus in your office all this policy don't get worried if you, if you if you need any help me and my team we are always there you can actually type it uh, you can actually even call up call us upon 7569645645 this is the number on which you can call up or you can also do one more thing you have an uh, scan uh, uh, qr scan code here right you can just uh, take a photograph of this and click on that link and uh, you can leave your name and details we me and my team will come out to you and will help you out in in actually having the uh, coverage in place okay so you please don't get worried we are always there to help you out right okay and uh, so with that we just finished the eighth one and um, the ninth one is about the workman compensation or the personal accident coverage uh, for all the employees okay and uh, all employees need to be categorized uh, whether uh, they are skilled or semi skilled or uh, unskilled for the workman compensation policy and for a personal accident policy we can have the coverage like their accident to death accident to permanent total disability permanent partial disability temporary total disability and also even the medical extensions which can be given and this can be given only for the owner the uh, the permanent employees of the organization only if it is a temporary kind of employees who just come and go and work a few days and then go away the best part is go for the workman compensation but all of the permanent employees it's better to go for the personal accident policy and i'm not going deep into the personal accident policy coverages because we have already done and we've been on on that so you can just check back on it okay right so the ninth thing which is already inbuilt into the office all is policy is about the workman compensation and the personal accident cover for the employees of the organization right and the tenth one which you need to take care is about the fidelity guarantee employee fidelity guarantee okay so what does this mean like uh, you, you your company might be working on some very critical uh, or very important kind of uh, information or it could be a corporate kind of information or something which is so proprietary that because of which the entire business is running 
and there might be few people who is really working and having hands on uh, um, access to the information might take away that information and sell it outside okay if you have the fidelity guarantee wherein the dishonesty of your employees can be covered okay the losses can be minimized your compensation will be given uh, based on the uh, uh, the coverage what you have taken all that what we have to give is we have to give the entire list of employees and the sum is what you need to have the coverage for each of them so this these are the 10 things these are the 10 things that you have to take care of your uh, uh, within your um, office or this policy and we also have something called as think tank so this is a section where we will just dwell upon um, what are the things that we need to really look into when there is a claim because everything looks everything looks excellent until there is a claim right isn't it so let us now check it out what are the things that we need to look at one is about the locations whether are we going to have a floater coverage or an independent coverage of your entire business right and you need to have a reinstatement value a reinstatement value so never go for a uh, uh, market value basis never go for that always go for the reinstatement value why because uh, if there is any damage we would love to go and purchase the new one right we can't go for the same old kind of thing and uh, with the same experience or uh, uh, number of years which has been used we can't find that kind of equipment we'll go for the new one so always the value should be on a replacement basis not on the market value basis okay and then the type of structure like uh, whether it is a shared or whether a temporary structure or an rcc or what is how many number of floors are there is there any uh, base exposure okay right so all those things need to be given and the value should also have plinth and foundation values also okay and at the same time we should also even look into the warranties which has been mentioned on the policy the warranties if you are unable to meet up with those warranties then it's like no the policy is void ab initio that means the policy is never been in in place okay there is a caped area which is there within the premises within the same compound then the risk is little higher that risk gets applied to the entire organization right the lift risk right at the same time if there are multiple offices which are there like this is a building which is out there you are also into an administrative type you are into consultancy you are also into some r&d and also some chemical manufacturing and everything is happening in one single place right then under the same name of the company then the high risk will be considered and it will be applied to the entire value of, for which we are taking the policy okay so these are the few things which we are actually giving you for the think tank right and uh, with 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 all those okay so you need any help you need any help uh, you can actually take in uh, uh, a photograph of this uh, qr code uh, it will you to lead you to a page where you can just key in your name your business name and your number me and my team will come out to you and we'll help you out okay or you, you or you can also do one more thing there is there is in this uh, uh, helpline number which is out there you can give a miss call or you can call upon this number it is 7569645645 you can also do uh, call on this number and then uh, me and my team will come back to you and will help you out in taking care of your complete office all this insurance policy okay and uh, at the same time uh, protect protect your complete business see it's it's your hard earned money right so you you are you are, though you are actually focusing on to the growth of the organization but what we require is you to have a safety net in place where all your assets can be actually taken care of. and it should help you out in taking care of any kind of liabilities which can turn up because of your business operations right so uh, as a business owner i know there will be a lot of work that you need to do like uh, you may have to take care of your your raw materials your production your marketing activity your hr activity your your financial activity uh, your finance your funding your bank need to be taken care 
so there's a lot of things need to be taken care of as a business owner and we know there are a lot of challenges especially under the small and medium enterprises wherein um, uh, everything boils down to the business owner right so don't get worried don't get worried we'll give you the action points which you have to look into okay the first and foremost thing is check check your existing office or this policy okay so is it an always policy or is it different different policies which you have if it is different different policy which you have then what we suggest is next uh, have a review on that have you review on that uh, uh, probably with your uh, safety team in place where it is covering the entire assets with all the specified occupancy in place okay if not if not this invite your uh, insurance specialist and then discuss with him and have all the endorsements done on your existing policies and when it whenever it comes to the renewal we can actually instead of having a separate separate policies we can have an all its policy when you have a greater coverage with ease of actually maintaining your policies right and uh, um, so get the right fit of coverages for your accelerated business growth for an accelerated business growth if you have any doubt if you have any doubt me and my team we are always there to support your business so there is this number 7569645645 or you can also even take uh, uh, the qr code uh, uh, which is out mentioned out here right take a snapshot key in your details will be all out there to help you out okay so with that with that come to an uh, end of this uh, session uh, that is 10 things that you need to focus on your office or risk insurance okay with that thanks a lot come back come back to uh, and uh, in the next episode and uh, this is the bi monthly webinar wherein we do these episodes on every second saturday and fourth saturday from 4 pm to 5 pm thank you thanks for coming back and we we wait for you during our next episode thank you